Okay, so I have some local scripts here that, um, that are in each sort of spot where local scripts can run. And they print out the parent, the parent's name, and then they print out if they can find the remote event and the replicated storage. So I'm going to play the game. And you can see when the output gets everything, you'll see that replicated first returns nil and everything else can return that remote event, regardless of whether or not they've waited for the child or not. So how is this? So when Roblox starts replicating things over to the client, everything in replicated first gets replicated first, hence the name. And then everything else in the workspace and the replicated storage is replicated second. So between the replicated first and the player scripts, that is when they take the snapshot before uh, studio, before it with the parts in, that's already in studio, they replicate those over to the client, and then that's when the uh, player scripts runs. Player scripts runs first, the backpack and the player GUI run second, and then the starter uh, character scripts run last. So that is how the replication queue works. Now you can use this for a variety of things. One, you don't have to use the, you don't have to check if the game is loaded in any sort of local script that is not in replicated first. So that is one major thing. And then the next thing you can look out for is how these local scripts can interact with each other. So that being said, like let's say for example, you have um, a GUI that you want to access in your starter player scripts. This runs first and it's replicated first, but everything in the starter GUI hasn't in exactly replicated over. So if you were trying to access it from the starter GUI, you'd have to wait for child, but you can get around this by moving the contents in starter GUI into the replicated storage. Now, anything, any UI you want is gonna be readily accessible with the player GUI and you won't have to use the wait for child functions like you would if you placed everything in starter GUI. Same thing goes for the backpack, anything in the backpack or anything in the starter character scripts that you want to move into uh, the replicated storage. If you want to access them in your starter player scripts, it would be best to move them all into replicated storage because replicated storage replicates everything under it before any of the local scripts run. That's not in replicated first. So that's a new thing I learned. Um, I know I have been using checking if the game is loaded and the starter player scripts, but now I know it's not needed. Um, I know also that I can move anything in my starter GUI into the replicated storage and I don't have to use wait for child or anything like that. I can just uh, use the dot method. It's a lot faster. It's a lot better. So. That's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, video. Um, so yeah, have a good day.